Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash Tales from Tech Support. And one of the viewers reminded me the other day that maybe technologically disadvantaged is a bad term, so we're going to change it up a little bit today. Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically deficient, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Tier 1 equals help desk in this case. This just happened to me and I needed to vent. I'd received a service ticket that the help less desk had received to install a software package. SCCM Software Center, which we use for all installations, had gone to failed status. Strike one, they didn't click the failed and give us the detailed error message. In this case, it didn't also include an error code. Strike two, their procedure is to get the C Windows Logs App Enforce Log and attach it to the ticket. So we, Tier 2, can investigate before interrupting the client for access to the machine. Yes, they even have a script for doing this. Strike 3. I was able to connect to the virtual computer, confirmed it failed, and gather the log. Then I checked the system's uptime, over 8 days. I'm glad I was working remotely from home and not on the phone. I rebooted the OS and installed the program without any issues. Needless to say, I also followed my procedure and notified my manager, who will bring it up to their manager and hopefully we'll see some time where they follow their procedure before we have another set of people due to turnover at their end and start this all over again. Too long didn't read, help less desk, didn't bother rebooting the computer when they had an error, and didn't bother documenting what the error was before tossing the ticket to tier 2 support to deal with it. Yeah, it sounds like somebody in their office needs to start enforcing their policies and procedures. Can't tell if they just didn't know what was going on or if they're just kind of passing the buck so that they don't have to deal with it. Customer demanding higher ping for their games. I work for a large scale ISP in the United States. I work on anything residential, but also offer technical support for small businesses and enterprises. This happened around a year ago. I work in the chat department and got a chat. There was a guy who chatted in and gave his details. He stated he was having speed issues. I looked at his modem, everything looked fine, and so we decided to run a speed test. The speed test was indicating that he was getting a great speed and had a ping of 10. With modems, any ping from 5 to 50 milliseconds is considered great. He then proceeded to tell me he lagged in his online games. He was hardwired from his Xbox into the modem. We ran speed tests on the Xbox as well, and it was showing very similar numbers to what we were getting with his PC. I told him there shouldn't be any issue and you should try rebooting the Xbox or taking it to Microsoft since it's a third-party device and it's part of our demarcation for obvious reasons. He was convinced that it was our connection that was the issue and not his Xbox and wanted a higher ping. I explained to him what higher ping would do and that it would make the lag worse, but he didn't believe it and was going off what his friends were telling him. I get that some games lags can actually help, extremely rare. He then threatened to leave the company if he doesn't get a higher ping so I asked if he wanted to be on a lower plan that could make his ping higher. He said yes. We got him from 250 Mbps download slash 10 Mbps upload to 50 Mbps download and 5 Mbps upload. We tested his connection and there was a higher ping due to the amount of devices connected. He thanks me and tells me I should get a raise and hangs up. <laughs> to this day I still check up on that account every month or so and he has yet to change his speed back to the speed he had before. I guess all he wanted was a higher ping after all. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but doesn't that mean that there are more devices sucking up resources on that signal? Like if I have 10 devices on my system and, you know, I'm getting a ping of 10, just using round numbers, and I add another 10 devices and I'm getting a ping of like 50 or 60, isn't that bad? I don't know. Wi-Fi woes of the woodworker's daughter. So I get a call from this old high school friend. Her Wi-Fi sucks. She has repeaters everywhere. Bought a high-end Wi-Fi router. Upped her internet to 400 MBS. But as soon as she gets about 20 feet away from the router, it drops to 100, then to 30, then to 10. So I go and check it out. Yeah, her router's in a window in a garage like 10 feet from the house. As soon as you go into the house, the speed drops at least by two-thirds. And she's mad that she bought all these boosters, which are plugged in all over the place and they must be the problem. She's all like, they say 2400 or something square feet, and they don't do it. I'm like, no, the boosters are only getting the signal that we can get 
using the laptop or tablet, but WTF, how is this hot rod, Asus, it's like $200 Wi-Fi game router, with antennas sprouting like a squid on Viagra, not going 20 feet before losing so much bandwidth. So I test locations, open the door, bam, only lost about one tenth. Then I have a look at the house. Holy crap, I forgot. Her dad owned a sawmill and was a woodworker. The walls are four inches thick of near pure wood, and maybe he added some metal flashing in there or some stuff. Huh. The internal walls aren't all that big, but all the walls in the main house are built like a tank. So I quickly wire the router and bring it to the main area, and all of a sudden things are good. So I explain that when they say 2,400 square feet, or whatever the number is, they're talking about some crappy apartment building, not a wooden castle. So we're running a hard line into each of the buildings with a router and bridge mode. Should work. But I've done wireless jobs. You know how bad mobile homes are? With the metal siding? This house is like, shielded. I don't know what's in those walls, but they might even stop an EMP strike. So we're getting it done, but never seen the like. Edit. It's a fantastic house. The old man did good. Just didn't worry about Wi-Fi. Yep, back in the day, they didn't worry about Wi-Fi signals, boys and girls. Especially plaster and lath, and in some houses, you even have metal lath. That really messes things up. Best day of my career so far. Background. I let this large retail company employ me for about eight years. Worked my way up from a lowly high school intern in IT security through college and eventually became the CISSP with a decent title. Growing to know most people in IT while I was there. I had just finished with implementing the identity and access management tool for all corporate and retail employees and received a job offer to double my salary at a different company. It was a tough decision. I didn't want to leave my coworkers with a system that only I had just implemented, so I asked to start in a month. Two weeks of documentation and system administration go by and it turns out the application was nearly flawless, except one thing. Employees were termed in the morning of their last day. Simple fix. Changing a right caret equals to just right caret in a database script for querying users to disable. So I put in for a change request and we have to wait two weeks to implement because the system is considered to be tier one with a sole IT person running it. Anyway, that's scheduled to be implemented on the Thursday in two weeks. I submitted my two weeks for this new job and my VP was very happy for me to find somewhere that could pay me what I'm worth. The day of my last change control, word had gotten around I was leaving. We reviewed the changes as normal talking about procedures for implementation, testing, validation, and back out. My change comes up. Me. This high-risk change is to fix a problem where employees are terminated the morning of their last day. Yada yada. CCB admin. I noticed you left the validation procedures blank. Surely this requires validation. Me. The only way to test is upon employee termination, so I guess I'll find out Friday morning if it worked. And the room just erupted with laughter. I really love working with these people. My current job is more stressful, but better experience and pay to boot. Yeah, it's pretty tough leaving a place that you're comfortable with and you get along with everybody. Uh, but, you know, in order to grow, sometimes you got to move on. It's on, baby. Ah, this one is one of my favorites. This happened in my first year as a member of the IT department of a certain small law firm. Only two guys there for tech support. Myself in the morning and another guy in the afternoon shift. Anyway, I was having the day off when I got an emergency call from the office. Apparently, one of the lawyers left some important files on his PC, and after getting his permission to turn on the PC and log in to get them, since he was unavailable, the other guys in the office find themselves with a major hurdle. The machine, even though it was on, was apparently dead. Panic mode engage. So they call me. I dragged myself there, and got the guy in charge freaking out on me. They needed the file now. So I got in and started checking everything, expecting something major. After a minute, I was a little confused. The machine was practically new and everything was okay, when I noticed it. The next minute, the guy in charge came in and the other guys working look up and I could feel their hopes shining in their eyes. So I decided to have some fun with the guy. Do have in mind, we all get along well, so there was no offense taken. With a straight face, I pull him over and pass my arm over his shoulder and said, Me. It's done. Him. Oh my god, thank you. I was starting to lose it. Me. It's okay, but I need you to listen to me in case this happens again, and I'm not around to help. He looked at me as if I was about to reveal one of the biggest magical mysteries of tech support, and could feel the eyes of everyone on me at that moment. Me. Next time this happens, check the on and off button on the monitor. After a second or two, suddenly everyone in the office are almost pissing ourselves with laughter. 
Man, we crack a good laugh every time we tell that tale. Good memories. Another one where everybody seems to get along really well and can figure things out and and get to a resolution without all fighting with each other. And it sounds like everybody's got a good sense of humor about it too. Right there's your problem. Quick and simple story for your Wednesday morning. I got a call from one of our warehouse employees about 30 minutes ago. I can't access the ERP. And also my email has a warning symbol, they said. Of course, I asked when the user last restarted the workstation. They admitted it had been a while and they'd try that. Five minutes later, still can't access network resources. And also, the other machine at this desk isn't down now. I walked back and noticed that yes, neither machine had an active network connection. Most likely an issue with their desktop Ethernet switch, thinks I. Network cables were plugged in, but there was no power and no lights. Quickly traced the power cable to the disconnected AC adapter. The one that the employee had personally unplugged, not so coincidentally, about the same time they called me with the problem. Turns out they thought they'd unplugged their adding machine. The fact that it immediately caused network problems and their adding machine kept running didn't apparently add up. Yeah, I'm not sure how they wouldn't have figured out that they just caused a problem or it was really coincidental. I pulled a plug and all of a sudden our network is gone, plus the fact that the adding machine was still working. I think I see the problem. Weekend. I was relaxing in a nice hot tub when Super VIP calls me. Critical person doing critical stuff. Part of my job to support him even if he is cussing up a storm. He's working from home and his computer doesn't work. VPN drops the tunnel every few minutes and Zoom stutters and lags like a drunken foghorn leghorn. I get out, dry off, and remote into his laptop. An 8th gen i5 with 12 gigabytes of RAM and an NVMe drive that's indeed dog slow. Load up speed test. 133 millisecond ping. Download speed 8, upload 1.2. Drop into PowerShell and get the gateway information. Uverse with a 5012 connection and 19, 19 wireless devices, half of which are reporting one bar of Wi-Fi. 5012 with 19 devices that includes streaming security cameras, several Macs and iPads, and one Wi-Fi access point in a 7,000 square foot ranch. Quick check of the Uverse page. Nothing faster in that area, though he has had Uverse for at least a decade. It isn't often that I can tell somebody that Xfinity will solve their problem but Xfinity is going to solve his problem. I loaded the page remotely for him and hooked him up with the sales chat person. Gig speed with multiple Wi-Fi APs. Let's try to get that ping below 100, shall we? Okay, that sort of confirms my suspicions from the first story about the ping. Too many devices on too little bandwidth. Today's misery from Lawyerville. So we've been getting Windows 10 version 2004 pushed to our machines by the city overlords which has been rendering our machines useless. An hour to log on, 20 minutes to open Windows Explorer, etc. So I've just been swapping them out, re-imaging them, and upgrading them past 2004 to 20H2. Is that 2012? Which has been working. I got a call from one of the lawyers that fancies himself a bit of a techie. Wanted to talk imaging and Windows builds and everything. I told him I'd swap his machine and he'd be back up and running in about 20 minutes. I just needed him to back up his C drive because, you know, I was taking it away. Cut to an hour later. He says he's ready. I go running up with a replacement laptop, pull the old one out of the dock, and start to configure the new one for him. Once it's set, I say, log on and make sure it looks good. He sits, logs in, says he's got what he needs, and as I start to walk away with the dead one, he says, so I'll be able to access all the files on my old laptop through this one, right? The heck? I guess Mr. Techie didn't really understand what backup means. Users who log tickets and then never reply. Ticket comes in and user has an issue with some software he's downloaded. User is a super user, in the gray area between slightly technical and standard user. I contact user via email. Hi user, let me know when you're available so we can troubleshoot your issue. Many thanks, me. Couple days go by, send follow-up email, no reply. A couple more days go by and send another follow-up email stating that if no reply, the call will be closed off. A couple more days, yawn. I send final email stating that as no reply, I've closed off the ticket and if it's still an issue to log a new ticket. Ten minutes later, user replies to me stating he still has an issue. Me. Mother. Watch your mouth, blood. It's busy. I can't log in. This just happened a few minutes ago and I'm still shaking my head over it. 
I work for an MSP and one of my clients has a call center for orders, product support, etc. One such user called in. Caller. Hi, I can't get logged into my computer. It's busy and I've restarted four times and it still won't let me log in. Me. Are you calling from home or the office? Caller. I'm calling from home. I... Wait. What do you know? It's applying user policies, update policies, etc. Continues giving me the play-by-play -play of what's appearing on the screen. Okay, it's letting me in, but I can't log into proprietary software. Me. Alright, are you receiving an error? Caller shares the error message. Cannot connect to server at this time. Please contact administrator for assistance. That's you, right? Me. Hmm. Sounds like you're not connected to the VPN. Try connecting to the network first, then try logging in again. Caller. Silence, then updates me again because she's rebooted the machine again. Me. Why did you restart your computer this time? Caller. Because I'd accidentally closed out the VPN login window thingy, and if you don't connect to the VPN right after startup, things get messed up the rest of the day. So I have to start fresh each time. Me. Shakes my head. She doesn't really need to do it this way, as her company doesn't have their machine set up like that, but to each their own. Caller. Okay, I'm on the VPN now and I can log into the software. Now why would my computer do this? Why was it not letting me log in before? Me. It sounded like your computer needed to run some updates. You have to wait for them to finish before you can do anything after logging into it. Caller. How do I update it? It's not supposed to keep me from logging in. She goes into settings and sees that her machine is up to date. If it's up to date, why do I need to update it again? Me. I explained to her that the machine already updated and that's why it was busy before and it asked her to wait. Call her. Doesn't sound like she believes me. Okay. Well, I'm in and getting my first call. Thanks. Have a great day. Click. Yeah, that's one thing I try to explain to my family members. When you open up your laptop, you know, a couple things happen. A, you got to be patient. Sometimes laptops need to think when they're either waking up or first starting. B, sometimes there's just an update that needs to happen. Now, if you do regular restarts of your computer, the updates should happen and everything should be fine. If you don't, it makes things a little more challenging sometimes. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you've enjoyed this content, would you do me a favor? Would you consider giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and maybe click that little bell icon so you don't miss the fat guy with the beard telling you stories. See ya.